I'm Deborah, and I'm going to show you today how to, first of all, do an acrylic pour uh, with resin. And with the acrylic pour, uh, if it has silicone in it, it has oils on it. So you'll have to clean your canvas off really well after it has dried. You have to have um, some soap and water and put it on there and wipe it off. Or you can uh, sand it with fine sandpaper. This happens to be 400 grit. And then wipe that off really well with uh, alcohol. It doesn't have to be 91% to, to just wipe it off. And then I'm also going to show you how to uh, do a resin pour that has, uh, uh, an acrylic pour that has already been resin but has some little places on the sides that didn't get covered. And the reason for this is because when I was doing this, I was in a hurry and I didn't tape off the edges. If you tape the edges off, like I've done on this first, on this one that's going to be resin for the first time, uh, then the resin won't slide off the edges as fast. I mean, it'll hold the resin on here, and uh, then after it has set for just a little while, I usually just leave it for maybe 30 minutes. Then I peel, I uh, peel the tape off of it so that uh, it'll, the resin will just gently flow over the edges, but it will stay on there. And like I said, on this one, I did not do, I did not tape it. So I had to sand it just a little bit on the edges and um, then wipe it down with alcohol. So I'm going to show you how to do that, both of those. I'm using, um, Envirotex light two-part epoxy resin. I've heated it up just a little bit. It's a little bit chilly down here. And uh, then after I get finished, if there's a little bit of resin left, I have some um, acrylic pour coasters that I've made that I need to put resin on top of. So I, uh, I try to keep something small around it that if I have any extra resin, I can take that and use it for something small instead of wasting it. So I'm going to mix my resin. Use two parts equal amount. And this is not going to take very much. Uh, it takes about two ounces, three ounces if you're going to be doing a resin uh, colored picture where you put the pigments and the colors in the resin itself. It takes about three ounces per square foot. And uh, if you're just doing a, a coat over something that you've already poured, it only takes about two. So I'm not going to mix up very much. I'm going to only mix up about four ounces. And I start with my hardener first because it's heavier than the resin. And it, they recommend that you put the... Uh, hardener in first and then mix in your resin. So that's what I'm going to do here. Maybe I didn't get quite enough hardener. And as you can see, I've, I'm just about empty on this particular these bottles of resin. And the resin is supposed to be mixed for three minutes. And you have to have a timer. So it's my timer is set for three minutes and I turn it on. And then I begin mixing with a stir stick. So now I'm going to put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. We mix it for three minutes. And I'm going to stop it while I mix it. Okay, now I've mixed my resin. 
And you'll also need a torch or a heat. Oops. I'm going to do the one that has not been resined first. See there, I don't know whether you can tell, but there are lots of little tiny air bu bubbles in the resin. And those come out when you heat it with a torch or a heat gun. And see, I pour real close to the edge. Spread it out and then I'll torch it. See, you can get right to the edge and it'll stay on there and uh, won't run off of it until I'm ready for it to. And that way you'll get good coverage. with the heat gun. I mean with the torch. Crim I use a creme brulee torch. And once you've torched it, and it'll heat up, then the resin will start moving around easy so I can move it around and get it onto the places where it is not covered. You have to look at from different look at it from different angles so you can make sure that you have it covered every place and then you can see if there's any pieces of dust or hair or something that has gotten into it from the air Or when you're leaning over it with your hair and it gets hair in it. Okay. And if there's anything in it at this point, you just, excuse me, just take your little stir stick and you just take it out. Keep a little rag close so you can wipe your fingers off before you start your torch or your heat gun so that it won't get it all over it. For 
there's still lots of bubbles being popped. And you can take your popsicle stick and uh, or your stir stick, tongue depressors, whatever it is you happen to use. The thick ones are nice. I run it just along the tape so that I can make sure everything is all covered on the edges. One more time. Something right there. Oops. Okay, now I'm going to move this one over while I do the edges of this. I don't think I'm going to have enough left this time to do the coasters. I'm not. better to be prepared and waste it than to be prepared and not need it. I actually like to use my fingers. The stick doesn't get it exactly where you want it to go, and your fingers work real fast. And the only problem with that, you got to make sure that you keep your fingers wiped off when you get ready to torch or use your heat gun. Or it will be covered. And you don't want the heat gun to, I mean the torch to, excuse me, I'm used to using the heat gun. Uh, the torch to be in one spot very long, it'll uh, cause your resin to bubble up and it'll make it uh, burn a little bit and spread out so it doesn't cover. And you can always go back and do it again.
just noticed there's some places right over here on the edge that still needs to be covered on this other one. Resin just causes your colors to just pop when you put the resin on there. It makes it look totally different. And I love to use the pigments. You can use acrylics or uh, dry pigments or spray paint, fingernail polish. There's so many things that you can use to color resin after you've mixed the resin up. And then you add just small, real small amounts of paint to your resin. But you, it reacts and you pour it different. And you have to use a heat gun on it. I said I whoops I have really good light in my little sh shop and it really makes a difference if you can see <laughs> really well like I've got everything covered except this one little spot down here at the bottom that looks like it just doesn't have enough resin on it. So also with the advantage of with the tape on it, the resin will go down and on the sides and collect resin and so you can just go along the edges and push your tape in and it'll make the extra resin come up on your painting if you need it. And I have needed it for some reason. And this one will. But anyway, there that's what it looks like. It won't change much at all when it's dry. It stays this glossy, looks like glass, and I love the way that it looks. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.